Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Edward Arnold in Laura Ingalls Wilder's The Long Winter on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we present our dramatization of a story by Laura Ingalls Wilder called The Long Winter. Have you ever stepped from a transcontinental train onto the platform of some railway station when the temperature is 40 below? Even a few minutes of it is something you'll never forget if it's a new experience, but perhaps it isn't. Perhaps you've been living in a place like that this winter. Well, the characters of our story lived in the Dakotas many years ago. Indeed, they were the kind of people who founded the Dakotas, a fine breed. And to play one of them in our leading role tonight, we have chosen a fine actor, Edward Arnold. And now a word about Hallmark Cards from Frank Goss before we begin the first act of The Long Winter. May we remind you once again that for every occasion important to your friends and loved ones, there are Hallmark Cards to carry your thoughts across the miles, across the years, or merely across the way. A Hallmark card says what you want to say, just the way you want to say it. And that identifying Hallmark on the back says that you cared enough to send the very best. Now, Hallmark Playhouse, presenting The Long Winter, starring Edward Arnold. Laura made her way toward the old buffalo wallow south of the Ingalls claim shanty. She could hear the cheerful whirring sound of the mowing machine. The power was cutting to thick and tall blue stem grass for hay. The sky was high and quivering with heat over the shimmering Dakota prairie. In early August, it was hard to believe that wind and snow and ice could ever drive the sun out of the sky, wither the grass, and freeze the pond. Whoa, Sam, whoa, David, whoa there, whoa, whoa. I brought you a jug of water, Pa. Sure, thank you, Laura. Fresh from the well. I pumped it myself. Uh, that's my big girl. <sighs> that's fine. That just hits the spot. Phew, the sun almost makes you want to... I want a bunch of sprouts in your hat to make shade. I don't see how you stand it, Pa. Oh, a man works better when he's warmed up, half pint. Well, I better get on the move. Lots of mowing yet to be done before sundown. Oh, Pa, mm. look. There's a haycock you didn't pick up. There is? Where? Over there. In the tall grass. Oh, oh by the pond there? <laughs> well, that isn't a haycock, child. That's a muskrat house. It is? Yeah, let's have a closer look at it, shall we? The horses will stand. Oh, I'd like to. Gee, it's big, isn't it? Bigger than me. Mm, and bigger around than the two of us could reach. Oh, my, my, we're going to have a hard winter, Laura. How do you know, Pa? Well, the colder the winter will be, the thicker the muskrats build the walls of their houses. You know, I never saw a muskrat's house built heavier than this one. But, Pa, how can the muskrats know? About the winter going to be cold. Well, I don't know how they know, but they do. God tells them, I suppose. Then why doesn't God tell us? Well, because we're not animals. We're humans. And we've got to take care of ourselves. But I thought God takes care of us. Oh, he does, my dear. He does. He gives us the sunshine and the rain and the land. But we have to clear the land and plow it. And we have to sow the wheat and tend it. And harvest it and make it into bread for our use. And other men make other things. They work in shops and in factories. Some plan and invent, some supervise and manage. And all together, we have built a great nation here in America. But each of us, as an individual, can do as he pleases. Will it? Can't muskrats do what they please? <laughs> no, my dear. 
Just look at that muskrat house. Now, muskrats have to build that kind of a house. They always have and they always will, but folks build all kinds of houses. And if their houses don't keep out the weather, it's their lookout. Man's free and independent. Oh. Well, come along now, little half pint. Come along. Your mother will be wondering what's become of you. And I got to make hail while the sun shines. Lots of hay. We're going to have a long winter. <laughs> No reason why it should. Do you think it's going to snow, Ma? Well, if it does, it'll be the first time I ever heard of a blizzard in September, Carrie. Pa said it was going to be a hard winter. Not winter yet. Take a look at that pie in the oven, Laura. It's beginning to brown, Ma. Looks good. I've never heard of green pumpkin pie before. Well, the frost killed most of the pumpkins before they could ripen. And we wouldn't do much if we didn't do things that nobody ever heard of before. Is Pa going to shoot a wild goose for Sunday dinner, Ma? Yes, child. Maybe you won't get a goose. Maybe you'll get some duck. Goose or ducks, one or the other. The pond's full of them this time of year. Pa! Hello, Daddy. Oh, come over by the stove, Charles. That wind must be raw. It is, it is. I walked into town. Got you a piece of salt pork for Sunday. Charles, what's the matter? Hmm? I don't know, my dear, but there's not a goose or a duck on the pond. And it seems that every living thing that runs or swims is hidden away somewhere. Maybe God told them like he did the muskrats. What did God tell the muskrats, Pa? Never mind now, Carrie, child. Supper's ready and your father's hungry, no doubt. Uh, Caroline, we're moving to town as soon as we can. Why? I've sure. got to haul the hay into town first for the horses of the car and the heifer. If I hurry, I can haul one more load in before dark. Oh, goodness, you just came in. But there's no time to lose, my dear. This house is nothing but a claim shanty. It doesn't keep out the cold. Our store building in town is good and tight and warm, and the stable is, too. And as long as the trains keep running, we'll be a whole lot safer there. Oh, now, Charles, you're not going to haul a load of hay before supper. <laughs> oh, supper will wait, Caroline, but I'm afraid the weather won't. <laughs> it is. Like a cloud almost. Dropping down. Yes, the snow is beautiful, all right, but just the same. I'm glad it didn't come till we got moved into town. But there's no telling when I can get the rest of the hay hauled in. Well, let's see now. Your father and I'll have the room at the head of the stairs. You girls can have the front room. I wish we had a place like this out in the claim. Well, you could be glad we have it in town, where a train comes every day with coal and supplies. <laughs> to be in town. We haven't been out of the house hardly in a month. Now, Laura. Oh, you kimberly goodness. Oh, this is a humdinger. Oh, it must be 40 below or better out there. <laughs> pa, your whiskers are all white, so you look like an old man. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder. I had to dig my way into the stable again. The snow's piled up high the door since noon. Here, Laura, take the pail, will you? Okay. Oh, I'm afraid there isn't much milk in what there is. Froze solid before I get it, could get it in the house. Well, let's be thankful for the little there is. There'll be less before there's more. <laughs> Things don't look too bright, my dear. There's no coal left at the lumber yard. Folks burn so much in this cold weather, and old, old Eli didn't have much on hand. What are we going to do, Charles? Oh, we're lucky, Caroline. Why, because, because we got lots of hay, and we'll burn that. Burn hay in the cook stove, Charles? Sure, why not? How, Paul? Well, 
well, we'll twist it. Uh, we'll twist the hay into sticks. It's not easy, I can tell you. But it'll help out till the trains get through. Come on, Laura, I'll show you. Well, there isn't a drop of kerosene in town. And Loftus hasn't got a bit of meat or flour left in the store. Almanzo Wilder let me have his his last bucket full of wheat, though. Well, we'll just have to make that do. Laura, child, fetch in a couple of handfuls of beans. Still a few left in the barrel. And five potatoes. Plenty of them, thank goodness. All right, Ma. You know, I wish there was a grist mill in town. Uh, you you can't just boil the wheat, can you, dear? Oh, well, but Charles, we have got a grist mill. Oh, yes? Sure. Hand me that old coffee grinder. We'll get along until the train gets through. Oh, my dear. <laughs> You're wonderful. <laughs> yes, we'll get along. Together, I know we will. about the train? Is it coming through tomorrow? Uh, there'll be no train till spring. Oh. Not till the warm winds come. Till the Chinook starts blowing. Charles. Mm. As fast as they clear the track into the, 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 the Tracy City cut, it fills in again. The crew has given up. Oh, but they can't do that. Well, we'll starve. Or freeze to death. Now, now, Caroline. We've been through harder times than this together. We've always made out. Like you've always said, it takes courage to open up a new country. And faith in the Lord. You should carry. Hand me my fiddle. Uh... Here you are, Pa. Now, now then, uh, I want you to sing, all of you. Sing like you've never sung before. We want the Lord to know that the Ingalls have courage and faith. The Lord our rock in him we hide. In just a moment, we'll return to the second act of The Long Winter, starring Edward Arnold. Around my house these last few weeks, I've heard a lot of talk about purple. It seems that's one of the big colors of fashion this spring, and all the ladies are planning on a hat of either lilac, orchid, or violet, or maybe all three. Anyway, when I went down to select my Easter cards, knowing that Hallmark cards always reflect the latest fashions, I fully expected to see purple bunnies. So I was really pleased when I found whole counters of beautiful Hallmark Easter cards in every color imaginable. I welcomed the delicate spring sky blues and pinks of the Easter bunny's ears, the creamy whites and waxy greens of the gardenias as you welcome the first sunny day of spring. And I know that when my wife receives the pink and white Easter card I selected for her, it will make her eyes all the brighter under her new purple hat because uh, the words inside the card say something extra special. And that Hallmark in the back means something too. To her, just as to your family and friends, that hallmark on the back of Easter cards, as it does on other cards you send, means you cared enough to send the very best. Now back to James Hilton in the second act of The Long Winter, starring Edward Arnold. Pioneers who settled our Midwestern prairies were tough. They were determined, and they had faith. Charles Ingalls and his family were of this breed and blood, but even they found the Dakotan winter a challenge, the long winter that seemed as if it would never end. There's an extra potato, Charles. They're not big ones, but you must keep up your strength. But, Caroline, I've already had mine. Well, eat it to save it, then. We don't want it, do we, girls? Oh, no, thank no, you, Ma. Ma. Truly, I don't want it. Sure. Well, in that case, uh, 
Well, how's the potato barrel holding out? Oh, there must be almost a bushel there. But the wheat's almost all gone, isn't it? Oh, we'll manage somehow. Already it's the end of January, then February is a short month. And March will be spring. Yeah, there's nothing like pork grease to bring out the flavor in a potato. I'm afraid that's the last of the salt pork, Charles. You know, Caroline, Loftus was telling me he heard there's a settler 18 or 20 miles south or southeast of here raised 300 bushels of wheat last summer. And he's wintering in his claim shanty. Oh, Charles, you're not going... Well, Loftus says he'd buy the wheat if somebody could go after it. He's the only man in town who's got the money to pay for it. I hope you're not thinking of starting out on such a wild goose chase. Well, a man might do it. With a couple of days of clear weather and a snowfall to hold up the sled? No. Oh, no, Charles, no. A blizzard might come up any time. And there are no roads, no marks of any kind. Mm, wrong. Charles, where are you going? Oh, I'm going over to Loftus' store. The Wilder brothers will probably be there and maybe some of the others. I won't be long. up some. Might be clear tomorrow. Hey, Loftus, are you still willing to put up the money for that settler's wheat? I said I would, didn't I? Don't know who's to go after it, though. I will. What? Well, there's folks starving in this town, Almanzo. Now, we're at 40 miles. We haven't had more than one clear day at a time since this thing started. Hey, you'd be lucky to make it in a day. Well, you're a storekeeper, Royal. A farmer has to take chances, and I'm a farmer. No telling when this weather will let up and folks in this town have to eat in the meantime. Ingalls is right, Royal. I'm going with him. All right, now, wait a minute, Elmont. Need time. Count out your money, Loftus. Got it right here. $300. I'll pay up to a dollar and a half a bushel. Well, I'm afraid you'll have to pay whatever we can get the wheat for. We appreciate your town spirit, though, Loftus. Uh, we'll get as much as we can for as little as we can. <laughs> if you can get through. And if you can find the settler... And if he's got the wheat, and if he'll sell. We'll take that chance. Uh, there'll be no charge for hauling. Am I right, Almanzo? Right. When do we leave, Engels? Just before sunup, as the weather clears. It's starting to snow again, Ma. Not the first time it snowed this winter. But Pa isn't back. Standing by the window won't bring him back, child. And there's still an hour or so before dark. What if he doesn't make it, Ma? Now, now, girl, girl. You wouldn't want your pa to see you like this, would you? You'll be all right now. I know it. But you can't even see the stores across the street, Ma. And out on the prairie. We won't talk about it anymore. Come on, girls. Now, if you'll sit by the stove here, I'll, I'll read you some verses. That'll help pass the time till Pa gets back. That's it. That's my help. Now, then, let's see. Oh, here's one. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. In the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. When I can read my title clear to mansions in the skies, I'll bid farewell to every fear and wipe my weeping eyes. <laughs> Light's getting so poor, I can't see to read anymore. <laughs> Potatoes must be about done anyway. Well, we'll set the table, girls. Father will be hungry when he gets back. He's frozen, I'll bet. Maybe I'd better get some more hay sticks for the fire. Shall I, Ma? Yes, as long as you don't have to twist anymore. Huh? Oh, no. Pa twisted a lot of them last night, remember? Yes, yes. Ma! Ma, it's Pa! He's back! I can see him! He's putting the horse in the stable! Oh, Lord, be praised. Go ahead. How's your fool head off, you 
can't get at us. You've tried all winter, but we'll beat you now. How much wheat are you and Almanzo bring back, Charles? Sixty bushels and a dollar twenty-five a bushel. Loftus and some of the men are unloading it now. Everybody's anxious to buy. Oh, a dollar twenty-five a bushel. I guess two bushels will be about all we can afford. Oh, but that'll see us through, though, Caroline. I'll go get it the first thing in the morning. <laughs> uh, thanks to Loftus, nobody will have to starve around here now, even if the trains don't come through till next yeah. May. Thanks to you and Almanzo Wilder, too. Who do you suppose that is? Well, you stay by the fire there. I'll see. Why, Mr. Fuller. Evening, Miss Ingalls. Your husband here? Well, yes, he's just... What is it, Fuller? Hello, Ingalls. Uh-huh. Did you charge Loftus anything for hauling that wheat? Almanzo Wilder says he didn't. No, I didn't charge him a cent. Why? Well, Loftus is charging $3 a bushel for that wheat. He what? How much wheat do you got left, Ingalls? Caroline. Laura ground up the last of it this morning. Uh, those two loaves of bread is all there is. Come on, Fuller. You get the Wilder boys. We'll have a talk with Loftus right now. <laughs> Let me handle this. Well, Loftus? Three dollars a bushel is what I said. It's my wheat, isn't it? I paid good, hard money for it. Well, you paid a dollar and a quarter a bushel. That's my business. Yeah, we'll show you whose business it is. We're going to you Wait a minute. so much as touch my property, and I'll have the law on you. That wheat's mine. And i got a right to charge any price I want for it. That's right, Loftus, you have. This is a free country, and every man's got a right to do as he pleases with his own property. But remember, Alonzo, and I didn't charge you a cent for hauling that wheat. Well, why didn't you? I stood ready to pay any reasonable charge for hauling. But three dollars a bushel. Ingalls and I didn't make that trip to skin a profit off folks that are hungry. Almanzo is right, Loftus. You know, there's not enough money in the mint to pay for that trip. We didn't make it for you. We made it for my wife and our two little girls and for all the other folks in this town who need that wheat to keep alive. Look at it this way, Loftus. We're all in this thing together. We've all got the same purpose. There's lots of land here for everybody. The soil is rich, we know that. But what chance could one have man have alone in a Dakota prairie? Against the wind, the snow, the rains, and the drought? Together we can lick it. And we are licking it, Loftus. We're building wealth and strength here. Not for ourselves, but for all America. So that those who come after us will have richer lives. More abundance, greater security. Good heavens, Loftus, you're one of us. You're not a selfish man. You're a free, independent American. Living in a great democracy. Working in a great cause. Not for yourself alone, but for all men. I can't put it any plainer, Loftus. Or more honestly. You, uh... You can buy the wheat for just what it cost me. Dollar twenty-five bushel. Gary? Yes. Listen, I have been. The snow is melting on the roof. Look, it's running down in torrents. What does it mean, Laura? The Chinook is blowing. Come on. Come on. Ma, the Chinook is blowing. The Chinook is blowing. Yes, I know, girls. I know. Spring has come at last. And huh? breakfast is all ready. You can sit down just the way you are. In our 90s, Ma? Sure. Nice morning. <laughs> well, girls, we beat all winter at last, didn't we? Here it is spring, and none of us lost or starved or frozen. Just potatoes and bread, Charles. Not much to celebrate, huh? Oh, it'll taste different this morning because we know that the trains will be coming through soon. How you ever managed with so little, my dear, I'll never know. You're a real wonder, Caroline. And I've got a lot to be thankful for. I'll bet the muskrats are glad the winter's over, too. Will God tell the muskrats that spring is here, Pa? Oh, I bet he whispered in their little ears better than a month ago. <laughs> <laughs> we thank thee, dear Lord, for all the many blessings received at thy hands, for the land you have given us to work, and for the happiness we enjoy as a family. 
our salvation, our home, and our lives, and this food to our use. We ask it in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. James Hilton will return in a moment. Uh, I guess it had to happen, but it still came as something of a shock when I answered the phone just before broadcast time. The voice at the other end said, uh, don't you Hallmark folks make a card to send to the income tax man? <laughs> well, about the nearest I could come to answering that request with its association to greenbacks was to suggest taking a look at the bright greens decorating the gay Hallmark St. Patrick's Day cards and leave it to the charm of the Irish to cast away the worries and cares of this week in March. You'll find these eye-twinkling Irish cards at the store where you buy Hallmark cards. And while you're there, why not select those Easter cards you want to send? They are lovely. And you can find one that helps you say what you want to say, just the way you want to say it. See these and all the other Hallmark cards when you want to remember your friends or share a smile with them. On special days or any days, a Hallmark card is warmly received. For remember, that Hallmark on the back tells in its own way, you cared enough to send the very best. Here again is James Hilton. Whenever your name appears in the cast, Eddie, the audience can always expect a great performance, and tonight was no exception. Thanks for being with us. Well, it's always great to appear on the Hallmark Playhouse, Jimmy, and I enjoyed it very much tonight. And, Eddie, we're all aware of your acting ability, but probably very few of our listeners know that you're a pretty fine cook, too. <laughs> but haven't you got some cooking hints to pass on to our audience? Well, as you know, Jimmy, I, I do like to cook exciting and different dishes, so... I always begin with a good recipe. I use the best of ingredients and then see to it that I put in the right thing at the right time. But <laughs> oh, wait a minute. That sounds like the recipe the Hallmark folks use when they make their Hallmark cards. The right words at the right time and the whole served in beautiful surroundings. I guess that's a recipe for many of the things that give us pleasure, isn't it, Jim? <laughs> it surely is. And speaking of pleasures, I think we have a special treat in store for our listeners next Thursday night, Eddie. On Hallmark, Playhouse, that's not unusual, Jimmy. Uh, what have you planned for next week? Our story will be John Sedge's The Long Love, a very warm portrait of an American marriage and the problems encountered. And for our star, we have that popular young actor, Van Johnson. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our director-producer is Bill Gay. Our music is conducted by Lynn Murray. And our script tonight was adapted by Axel Grinberg. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. <laughs> For Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember, Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. Edward Arnold will soon be seen in the Paramount picture Dear Brat. The role of Caroline tonight was played by Lorene Tuttle. Anne Whitfield was Laura. Norma Jean Nelson was Carrie. Also in our cast were Ted Osborne, Lamont Johnson, Sam Edwards, and Carly Bear. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you all until next week at this same time when Hallmark Playhouse returns to present Van Johnson in John Sedge's The Long Love. And the week following, Margaret Irwin's Elizabeth, Captive Princess, starring Anne Baxter. And in the weeks to follow, Francis Parkinson Kai's Joy Street on the Hallmark Playhouse. Missouri.